All they wanted was the right to get married, they said, so they could visit their partners in the hospital when they were sick, most likely from one particular disease. But now mustached men wearing dresses greet the little girls in Disneyland when they go to get a princess makeover. So my name's Nick. I'm one of Fairy Godmother's apprentices. I'm here to shop you around and make all your selections for the day. Not that long ago, even under the Obama administration, if a man came to Disneyland dressed like this, let alone who was employed there, he would be fired immediately and escorted out of the park by security. But sadly, this is nothing new. For at least two years now, Disney has been promoting men in dresses. Hello, and welcome to the Disney Plus This Is Me Pride Celebration Spectacular. I'm Nina West, and I'm here to guide you through a magical, musical, and meaningful celebration of the LGBTQ plus community. Imagine having to explain to your five or eight year old daughter why there's a man in a princess dress working in Disneyland. Well, I guess you could start with telling the biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, honey, a long time ago, there were these twin cities called Sodom and Gomorrah, and they were filled with people like him. And then God decided to rain sulfur down upon them because they were I'm sorry, I forgot you're not allowed to tell certain Bible stories on the big tech platforms anymore, but stay tuned because there's plenty more to come in this video. But real quick, join my exclusive Locals community by clicking the link in the description below because that's where I post all of my uh, uh, non-politically correct content. It's basically like Patreon or it's like an exclusive Facebook community only for cool people. And it's five bucks a month that helps sponsor my channel. And like I said, it's a place where you're allowed to actually speak freely without getting censored or banned. So click the link in the description below and I'll see you over there because I'm definitely going to have to bite my lip for the next month with the Sodom and Gomorrah celebrations going on. But there is some good news. Target has lost over $12 billion, I think in the last week alone, since people finally had enough with them pushing their cultural Marxist propaganda and $2.4 billion yesterday. Apparently investors are worried that Target may become the next Bud Light, and it certainly should, because everybody knows what happened to Bud Light. Their sales are down 30% from last year. I'm actually surprised it should be a lot more than that. I figured it would be at least 50%. But that's a good start. The liberal media is furious that Christians, conservatives, and even many brand names, supposed conservative political pundits and social media personalities, are finally speaking out against this woke propaganda tsunami. And Target has reportedly dropped only one line of clothing from the Satanist designer. And so the LGBT rainbow mafia and their allies in the media are extremely upset. When Target caves into this, then it says that the moment you threaten the employees of even a very large corporation. You mean dare to speak out against it. You mean finally the brand name Republicans are posting on social media about how they've had enough. You get to control its policies. This is economic terrorism, literally terrorism, creating fear among the workers and forcing the corporations to sell the things you want, and not sell the things you don't. So I'm sorry, sir, or whatever your preferred pronouns are, but I thought the customer was always right. Of course, National Review, the fake conservative publication, the neocon publication is siding with the woke corporations saying, well, sometimes a onesie is just a onesie. But you can't even buy dog treats these days without being bombarded by LGBTQAIPK2 plus propaganda. These are some treats from the famous Milk Bone Dog Treat Company. Notice the dogs are all waving rainbow flags. Actually, not even the rainbow flags because that wasn't inclusive enough. So then they had to add some more colors and then that still wasn't inclusive enough, so they had to emphasize that the flag also symbolizes black and brown queer people. That's literally why the black and brown stripes are on there. It's just never enough. This from Newsweek magazine, PetSmart faces boycott calls over Pride collection with normal people calling it unacceptable, and they quoted me in this article. And notice how they've watered it down like any cult does. They use deceptive terms. They're just calling it Pride Month. And Pride parades, pride celebrations, it's queer pride, it's LGBTQ plus pride, it's a homosexual holiday. Add Kohl's to the list of stores to boycott, or if you happen to be there, to sound off peacefully and politely to the clerks and manager about them celebrating these two dudes, stealing these poor children, and condemning them to be raised, not only by them, but to not even have a mother in their life, not even know who their mother is. 
people like Dave Rubin, conservative inks, token gay guy who bought his children through surrogacy and is condemning them to this same horrifying life. The Toronto Blue Jays pitcher, Anthony Bass, posted on his Instagram page, encouraging Christians to support the boycotts against Target and Bud Light and everybody else. But then the very next day, this happened. I recognized yesterday, uh, I made a post that was hurtful to the Pride community, which includes friends of mine and close family members of mine. And I'm truly sorry for that. He's sorry for siding with Christians over the LGBT community. Sorry for standing up for God's word. Um, I just spoke with my teammates to, and shared with them my actions yesterday. I apologize with them. And as of right now, I'm using the Blue Jays resources to better educate myself, to make better decisions moving <laughs> forward. The only thing you need to do to better educate yourself, buddy, is to go and reread the Bible. Uh, the ballpark is for everybody. Uh, we include all fans at the ballpark and we, and we want to welcome everybody. Nobody said that they couldn't come to the game. That's all I have to say. Thank you. What an absolute coward. Now I actually support him getting canceled. LA Dodgers pitcher Clayton Kershaw has surprisingly spoken out against his team's plan to host a nun-themed drag queen group, an anti-Catholic, anti-Christian, blasphemous drag queen group to celebrate LGBTQ AIPK2 plus Pride Month. Now, in that interview with the LA Times yesterday, Kershaw explained that he doesn't agree with any group that makes fun of other people's religions. He said it has nothing to do with the LGBTQ community or Pride, simply that the group was making fun of a religion. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are a nonprofit organization that's very active in the LGBTQ plus community. The group also dresses in drag as nuns. Notice how he had to make it extremely clear that he has no problem with the LGBTQ plus shoving their propaganda in everybody's faces when it used to be don't ask, don't tell, but now they won't shut up about it. It's only because they're making fun of Catholics. And the only reason that the LA Dodgers are able to get away with hosting these people is because most Catholics and Christians have become extremely and pathetically weak. It goes without saying that none of these groups would dare dress up and drag as Muhammad and no major league sports team would ever even consider allowing such thing to be performed on their field because, well, the Muslims would take a dramatically different approach to making sure that that would be stopped. Nor would they ever consider hosting anybody doing drag dressed as rabbis because the ADL and Literally every Jewish group around the planet would have them shut down in two seconds and begging for forgiveness. Also, a pitcher for the Washington Nationals named Trevor Williams has denounced the LA Dodgers for hosting such an event. And now it appears that an LA Dodger himself, Blake Trinan, has issued a statement in polite terms to disagreeing, not denouncing his own team because he definitely doesn't want to bite the hand that feeds him. But he did issue this lengthy statement saying that he is disappointed in his team for allowing the blasphemous uh, drag nuns to perform at the stadium. Now, you may recall that when word first was announced that they were going to be there, there was a lot of backlash from Catholic groups and Christians. Then they were disinvited, and then the Rainbow people freaked out so bad that the LA Dodgers re-invited them and apologized for canceling their invitation but now we have an L.A. Dodger player himself and players on other teams pushing back against this. So this should be our next target. If we can get the L.A. Dodgers to cut ties with this group again after they already reinvited them and apologized, that'll be a major victory. And again, I'm going to have to be very careful how I express my opposition to these Satanists over the next month. So join my Locals community by clicking the link in the description below. That's where I could post how I really feel without sugarcoating it. And it's a way to sponsor my channel for five bucks a month. It's sort of like Patreon and a private Facebook community, uh, but they actually allow free speech. You can pretty much say whatever you want there without getting censored or banned. So click the link in the description below. Join my exclusive Locals community. Stay tuned and I will see you soon.